Sharon, a lot of people are comparing this crisis to Chernobyl uh, in the 80s. What is this Chernobyl? Is it worse? Is it better? Is it is it just different? This is not a Chernobyl. It is different. It's a different kind of reactor. It's a whole different situation. The reactors responded the way they were supposed to with an earthquake. They shut down. That's the first difference. The reactor at Chernobyl did not shut down. As a matter of fact, it was kind of stuck in that uh, nuclear chain reaction situation. The second thing is that they have been able to cool down the reactors uh, but they have had some problems. So what we're looking at is a release of radiation from what looks like now to be a partial core meltdown in three different units, but it is nothing like on the scale of Chernobyl. And there's, there's three, that are, three reactors that are in trouble right now. Is, is, what's the worst, the Daiichi reactors, or are they... The Daiichi reactors in units one and three, uh, there has been what we think is a partial core meltdown, plus uh, both of those have had explosions from hydrogen uh, being released and coming in contact with the air, and that's created an explosion. Uh, what that has done is blown the roofs off of the containment building, but not the containment vessel. So as far as we know right now, the steel container that uh, in which the reactor is housed um, is still intact. And that's another important difference from Chernobyl. In that case, Chernobyl, there was no containment building. All the radioactivity uh, and, a, in fact, a nuclear explosion was released to the environment. That's different here. In the Unit 2, what we've heard so far is that some of that fuel has been exposed uh, to the air. That fuel needs to be covered with water and uh, because the water helps to cool it down. Once the fuel uh, gets very hot and it's not being cooled down, that's when you run the risk of there being some melting. So we're going to have to wait and see to, to uh, assess the extent of the damage to that fuel also. What are they doing right now to stabilize the reactors? They uh, have resorted to uh, what some may call a last-ditch effort. They are, they've injected seawater into two of the reactors, as far as I know. Um, that pretty much means the end of those reactor lives. Uh, most of that water that you normally cool reactors with has to be uh, highly controlled. Um, they've also put uh, something called boric acid in there, which uh, is a neutron absorber, so that it's going to uh, tamp down any kind of uh, nuclear reactor. They need to inject it with chemicals, in other words. Do you expect the situation to get worse before it gets better, and what's the worst case scenario? I'm hoping it doesn't get worse. Uh, I don't expect it to get worse, uh, but in some cases with these nuclear reactor incidents, some things happen which uh, cannot totally be foreseen. So uh, you never know when a valve is going to stick, or uh, in this case, the diesel generators that were supposed to pump water into the reactors, they weren't working because the tsunami waves hit. Even though I think we can hope for the best, and certainly the Japanese officials are very competent, and they've been working very hard and should be commended for their efforts, I think we're just going to have to wait it out and uh, see what happens over the next few days. Are these facilities too close to the coast? No. Japan is just in too, too earthquake-prone a zone. Um, you know, all nuclear power reactors require some water uh, as long as they're using water to be cooled. Many of uh, the 440 reactors that operate uh, around the globe are on sources of water, whether it's rivers, uh, or on the coasts. Uh, Korea, for example, has all its reactors on the coasts. So um, I think we, you know, that is one of the risks of uh, nuclear power, and you can certainly take precautions. Um, but in the case of Japan, um, I think no one uh, anticipated that you would have two of these catastrophic events uh, happening one right after another, the earthquake, and then the tsunami, and now what we're seeing is aftershocks and more big waves. So, um, you know, it's very unfortunate. It's not something that happens all the time, but uh, you 
needs somehow to account for them. How much damage does this disaster do to nuclear power's reputation in Japan and around the world? It's hard to know with Japan uh, because the Japanese public has been very supportive of nuclear power. Japan has very few resources. It has uh, depended on nuclear power for the past uh, 30 or 40 years for 30 percent of its electricity. It's been, uh, you know, very supportive. Um, but I think uh, this is going to give um, the public some pause. Uh, Japan is in the process of building 14 reactors. At least that construction may slow down a bit as uh, officials and politicians uh, consider what steps they need to take. Globally, there's been a lot of enthusiasm in the last five or six years about nuclear energy. There's been talk of a renaissance. Uh, you know, in this country, uh, we've had a lot of license applications. Um, you know, I'm not sure that any country considers uh, that they will also at some point be subject to an earthquake and a tsunami at the same time. But uh, it certainly highlights um, the, the technical sophistication and care that uh, everybody needs to take with nuclear power. Sharon, thank you for your time. You're welcome.